Hello, and welcome to another episode of Professional Book Girl. My name is Kayla, and I read a ton of books so that I can recommend the best to you. And before we get right into it, I am going to just reiterate our September book club pick. I feel like I forgot about it, so you might have forgotten about it. Our September book club pick is Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. It is a fantasy book. I think it's why I'm pretty sure it's YA. Um, and it's about pirates. So very exciting. That episode will air on October 3rd. And if you would like to have your thoughts in the episode, you can record a voice note and send it to me via email, professionalbookgirlpod at gmail.com. Or you could type out your thoughts and email it or DM them to me at kredwood or at professionalbookgirl. And I will include it in the episode. I have not read the book yet. I'm saving it because the last weekend of September, I have to um, like babysit my cousin the whole weekend. So I'm just planning on reading that book while I'm there. And then I will record and get that episode out on the third. Um, I feel like this is the first time in a while that I'm sitting down to record a normal episode. I know we did do the August wrap up um, and then we've been having a lot of interviews. I told you guys in the summer, it was just my schedule was just so off. And I did mention that in October, things might be a little different because I'm going to Paris for two and a half weeks, but um, I have a plan. So October will be pretty normal. And then it is so crazy. But before we know it, I'm going to be doing my wrap up of favorite books of the year. And before we know it, November is one year of PBG, which is just absolutely insane. So I'm trying to figure out what I want to do for the one year anniversary. If you have any ideas, let me know. Um, but yeah, so Today, we're going to be talking about some books that I've read and loved recently. I talked about this in the August wrap up. I do feel like I'm not, I haven't been super loving so many books, but there were a few that stood out. So that's what we'll talk about. But before that, I just want to talk a little bit about my life lately and maybe address the elephant in the room, which you would know if you follow me on Instagram. But I met Oprah, um, and it is, that is an insane sentence to say and something I never thought that I would say up until now, which you guys helped me decide this. My sister and I, we're talking like a few months ago and we were like, who's the most famous person we've ever met? And like, we both met a lot of celebrities just like living in the city and like nature of our lives, I guess. But we were together when we both met Hillary Clinton and she was very kind and she had the softest hands in the world. Um, and then my sister met Kim Kardashian. So up until now, I was saying that Hillary Clinton was the most famous person I've ever met. I feel like Oprah might top that list. But now that I mention it, I just want to tell the story of when my sister met Kim Kardashian because it is a wild story. So this was back when like Kylie Cosmetics was the number one thing in the world. Everyone was obsessed with Kylie. It was my senior year of college. And there was one year where my sister and I both overlapped at FIT. And Kylie did a pop-up store in Soho. And my sister went because like – all girls all the age at the time we were both just so obsessed with Kylie and this was when the lip kits had first started and we were I go on and off watching Kardashians I didn't watch the last season but this was a time when my sister and I were both watching um every season and my sister Erin went to the pop-up and she was standing in line and who walks out but Kim Kardashian and Erin took a selfie with her. But at the same time, the paparazzi took a picture of Kim and my sister taking a selfie. And you can see my sister so clearly in it. And then Kim tweeted that picture of her and Erin out and was like, said something about like popping into Kylie's store. And like, I cannot even begin to explain to you like the magnitude of what that Kim tweeting that photo. Like, girls were coming up to me on campus. Like, oh my God, your sister. Like it was such an insane, crazy moment. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's just, I want, I figured I would share that like fun little story, but, um, I met Oprah and I feel like she probably is the most famous person I've ever met now. How did this come about? So Meta very kindly invited me to this event to celebrate Oprah's book club, but it actually was supposed to happen. I think back in June, it was like May or June. And I, I was home when I got the email and I freaked out and I told my mom and then I told my dad. Like I only told my parents about it because it felt like such a like, oh, I posted my Instagram and like so many amazing things have come out of K Red What and not professional book girl, but like it's Oprah. Like I was like, oh, this is like a legitimate moment coming out of my Instagram account. So um I told my parents, I didn't tell anybody else because I just had like a feeling about it. Cause I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm psychic and I just had like a vibe that like maybe this wasn't going to happen. 
and Oprah had to cancel because she was in the hospital. She was hospitalized. She canceled her whole trip to New York. And then it turned out she basically had like Ozempic stomach, but um, they rescheduled it. But I, we didn't hear anything for months until like two weeks before they said that they rescheduled it. And it was originally going to be at the Instagram offices. But then they moved it to the rare book room at Strand, which I feel like made it better because it was like a very intimate setting. And I'd say there was maybe 50 people there. Um, and Eva Chen interviewed her, who is head of fashion at Instagram. She is, has been like my biggest career inspo since I was a teenager. So that was such a cool moment too. And Oprah came out and Eva interviewed her in front of us. And it was like a conversation about the book club book, which is the new Elizabeth Stout, Stout book. And the author was in the audience. And then also just about books and Oprah's reading habits. So Oprah has a TBR cabinet. She doesn't lend out her book. She was like, if my hands touched it, like nobody else is getting it. Um, And she was like, she loves a book with like a house on a cover. And it was like really interesting just to hear her talk about her reading habits and how she got into reading. And she kept saying like, oh my God, I'm with my people. Like, it's so cool to be with book lovers, which is just like really cool. Um, And at one point, Eva was like, okay, we have to wrap it up. And Oprah was like, no, I don't want it to end. And then they went on for like another half hour. And then they asked, she did questions from the audience and she obviously is so good at what she does. So even when she was talking about books, she listening to her talk, I was like, oh, I feel like I'm at church and I'm not a religious person, but like just the way she speaks, she's so good at just connecting with everybody in the audience and making you feel something. And she would always, even if she was asked like about her TBR, like she would find a way to weave it back and connect it to the book club pick for that she was there promoting. Like she's just like masterful at conversation, which I know is not, not news, but it was just wild to watch it happen in person. And then when it got into the Q and A, it was like questions that were a bit broader. And um, I really like she was giving life advice and like friendship advice. And I was just like getting emotional in the crowd. It was, I felt like I was in the audience at her show. It was such an insane moment. And then I assumed that she would leave right after, but it ended and she stood up and everyone went up and I was in the second row, but suddenly I was like in the back of the crowd. Um, and I was like, okay, whatever. I'm not getting a picture with Oprah. But then I went around the side and I suddenly found myself standing in front of Oprah's social media manager who took my phone and ushered me to Oprah. Um, and I, it was like such a quick moment. She really wasn't making conversation. I think she like knew she needed to get as many photos with people as she could. She was talking with some people, um, but I was just like, it is such an honor. Thank you so much. And she was like, thank you. And then I got out of the way so somebody else could get their photo. But it was just a wild moment. And it was so funny. The second she left, like the room erupted. Everyone was like giggly and giddy. And it was like, everyone was trying to keep it together while Oprah was in the room. But then when she left, we could kind of like let it out. And it was so cool and so much fun. And I was like, I can't wait to post about this on my personal Instagram account because it was just like, oh yeah, like this is what I'm up to since high school. Like I'm hanging out with Oprah and it was such a moment. Like the texts I was getting, people were just like, you met Oprah? I was like, yeah. And then it was so funny. Actually, the next day I went to a different book event. I went to um, Bramble, which is a romance imprint, their one year anniversary party. And a few girls who were also at the Oprah event were there and everyone was like, oh, like the Oprah girls, like everyone wanted to hear about it. It was like, it was really fun. So yeah, that is my experience meeting Oprah, which I can't believe I just said that. Um, but I was like back and forth to the city for a little bit. I'm By the time you're listening to this, I am back in the city for good. I did. I went back for a few days for book events and then I did come back um, to my mom's because I got a few more beach days in. I had my final beach day, which is always so sad, but I, like I posted on my Instagram, I literally am a Victorian woman who has to take to the sea for a few months a year. It restores me. I feel so at peace after. And you guys know I've had like a very crazy, crazy good summer. And then like getting laid off was not good. (laughs) Um, And just like I would go to the beach and like all my stress went away. And I'm sad that that's over, but I am excited to get back into my life. I am embracing fall. I bought a pumpkin spice candle today. Um, I'm, I haven't had a pumpkin spice latte yet. I think I'm going to get one probably tomorrow. I'm trying to like be good and make my coffee at home. But I'm ready for fall. I'm so – I'm excited for when I get back to the city. I have some really fun book events coming up. I'm excited to hang out with my friends because all my friends live in the city except for like – 
two of my close friends live upstate New York. So when I'm on Long Island, it's really like spending time with my family, which I really love. Um, but I'm excited to like get back to my life. And then I'm going to Paris so freaking soon. I like have already, I've booked all my tours. I've done it all. Um, I can't believe it's almost here. And I just keep thinking like, oh my God, in a few weeks, I'm going to be in Paris and then I'm going to London for a few days. So I am so excited for that. I mentioned this a bit earlier. There will be episodes coming out while I'm in Paris. And then when I get back, it's going to be so much fun because I'm going to, I'll recap my trip. I'll post, we can do a QA, and a and then I'm going to, I'll talk about the books that I read during my trip. So I can't wait. I just like, I can't wait to go. I feel like there's so many good things coming up. I'm really such a like, last six months of the year person because it's summer and then it's the holidays. Like I'm also ready for Christmas. So right now it's like summer's over. I'm in like Paris mode. Like I'm going to do fall for a second and then it's Christmas. Like I can't wait for Christmas. I did already buy Christmas decorations, which is not good, but Love Shack Fancy is doing this collaboration with PB Teen, like a Christmas line. And there's there is this um, garland that I had to have. It's a pearl garland with pink velvet bows. And I feel like it would match, it would match my room all year anyway. So I had to treat myself to that. Um, but yeah, that's what's what I've been up to lately. I feel like everyone listening does follow me on Instagram, but I will be sharing in my stories. I have a lot of really fun book events coming up. And then obviously Paris. I'm trying to figure out – how I'm going to post Paris. A part of me kind of wants to do daily vlogs um, on K Red What for the trip, but I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see how it we'll see how it uh, we'll see what I'm in the mood to do when I'm on my trip. Honestly, but let me know if you would. I definitely will do like the daily stories like I did when I was on my England trip. If you remember that, um, and then we'll we'll figure it out from there. So without further ado, here are three books that I have read and loved. Recently, the first one is JFK Jr. by Rosemary Trenzio and Liz McNeil. So I feel like like any normal American, especially an Irish American, I know a lot about the Kennedys, like American royalty, so fascinating, Kennedy curse, just like so many interesting things happening within this family. And I did, I feel like I knew more about JFK Jr. for somebody my age than like, than most people my age, just because of how I am with history and like becoming obsessed with things. So I felt like I knew a fair bit about him, but I can safely say that I knew like literally nothing compared to everything you learn in this book. I literally came away feeling like I knew him after reading this. I actually did this on audio. I think it would be a good book to read too, but I just had it in my head. I was like, oh, this will be a fun book to do as my um, August monthly audiobook, and I listened to it in like 10 days. Like, this is the fastest I've ever done an audiobook. This is my favorite audiobook I've ever done. I was looking for excuses to listen to it any chance I could. So, you guys know, or maybe you don't know, but I do one historical nonfiction audiobook a month. I can only do nonfiction on audio. I've tried fiction, it just it doesn't work for me. So, I typically will listen to it like when I'm cooking, but like I, since I've been at my mom's, I have not been cooking. But I'll do like when I it, like, is this TMI? When I get out of the shower and I'm putting lotion all over my body, and or like when I'm doing my skincare in the morning and at night, I listen to my audiobook if I'm putting laundry away, um, in instances like that. So typically in the summer, I'm only listening for like 10 to 15 minutes a day. But with this book, any spare second I had. If I was eating lunch, I would just like sit and stare off into space and listen to this audiobook. Like I could not stop listening to it. So it's an oral history, which means that um, it's written in the same way Daisy Jones and the Sixes, if that like helps you put it together. But it would say like Kayla, and then it would be what I said. And then it would say like, Michelle, and then what Michelle said. Um, Michelle is one of my close friends' names. That's why that just came right to me because I was just texting with her. So that's how it's written out. And I feel like th- I feel like that is what makes it really good on audio. So there's a full cast of characters, but it also would be probably like easy to read. Um, but this book covers JFK Jr.'s whole life. If you are not aware, that is the son of JFK, former president, and Jackie Kennedy. And um, he was only like two or three when – His dad was killed. There's a very famous photo of him saluting his dad's coffin, which they do talk about in the book. And he died extremely tragically. So I'm going to talk about the death because like it's 
it's not a spoiler, he died, but um, he was piloting a plane with his wife, Carolyn, and her sister. And it first they thought it was missing. And then it turns out that they had crashed and died. And basically the book covers literally everything about his life, but it is told from people who knew him. The authors were, are two of his closest friends. So the specifically Rosemary Trenzio, her portion stood out so sharply to me because she worked with him at George. They worked very closely together and she was best friends with him and Carolyn. And she was the one who had to like go into their house after um, they like were first killed. And like, it it's just so fascinating because you're hearing about him from the people who knew him best. None of the Kennedy family are involved. Carolyn, his sister, who is still alive and who is Jack's mom, if you know Jack, like if you know, you know. Um, it was also very interesting. I was listening to this book around the time of the DNC and if I guess like maybe I'm assuming non-Americans maybe would know this, um, not to be that American. That's like our politics are the center of the world, but I feel like especially this election is kind of the center of the world. But Jack Schlossberg is Carolyn Kennedy's son. Um, he's the grandson of JFK and he is working for Vogue right now doing like political correspondence. I'm not super into all of his content, but I think he does a good job of explaining things and breaking it down in an easy to understand way for people who aren't like always tuned in uh, to what's happening in politics. But it was interesting. Like I was listening to this when the DNC happened and Jack was at the DNC. And so he was like everywhere on my social. And then I'm, and everyone's like, he's a new JFK junior. And like, look, we're objectifying men here. Jack is cute. He is no JFK junior. Like this man was beautiful. Like, stunning like it's like sickening how beautiful he was like he was better looking than his dad like just gorgeous like absolutely insane and I can't imagine like I, if I was a young if I was alive when he was alive like I totally had a crush on him I think I have a crush on him now was that that's like so bad to say right about a dead man I don't know um but anyway part of why I felt like you really got to know him was because it's his closest friends talking about – and his colleagues and, like, the Secret Service agents who were tasked because president's kids get Secret Service until they're 18. So um, it's just so interesting. It follows literally his entire life. And what I really liked was that it wasn't biased. They talked about his flaws too, specifically when it came to his death. They literally say John killed Carolyn and Lauren, her sister. Like, it was his error. He never should have gone up in the air that night. It was his mistakes that – killed his wife and his sister-in-law and i i liked that it wasn't that they were like very honest about that and one of my friends is was also has also been reading this book and she's been reading another book about jfk jr called the reluctant prince and she was like it's so interesting how they just keep talking about how reckless he was and it's true like it's a through line through his life he was very reckless um to the point where he kind of thought he was invincible but it's just so fascinating given like he almost died so many times because he was like very adventurous, but he he was reckless with his life and unfortunately with other people's lives when it came to how he died. But you just see like his luck ran out. Like he just was always making these decisions that were very unsafe. Um, and it's it's just sad and it's such a loss. And I knew obviously like I knew how he died before I was listening to this book and I was flying through it. But then when I got to – when I knew I was getting up to – the last days of his life leading into the death, I started listening to it slower because I was just like, I didn't want it to happen. Like I knew, I know it happened, but I was like, I just, I wanted the ending to change so badly. And it reminded me the only other time I remember feeling that way so vividly was recently when I was watching the last season of The Crown when Princess Diana died on the show. And it was like, you know what's about to happen. And I was just like, don't get in the car. Like you want the ending to be different so badly. And it's unfortunately just not. So this was a five-star read for me. Um, just brilliantly done. It made me reflect so much on like today's political climate, um, like, but also just to think about what a force of nature this man was. And like they even say in it, like he he would have been like there's he was kind of gearing up to run for office, to start running for office. Um, not for the presidency, but like lower office. 
at the end of his life. And it just makes you think about what could have happened now. But also he, that part of the Kennedy legacy kind of ended with him. I'm not going to mention his cousin, but we all saw how that ended recently. Um, also was an insane, insane time to be reading this, just like with all of the RFK stuff going on, but whatever. Um, but it, it just – I was like deeply sad after I finished this for like – for a bit, for like a day. Like I was like, my heart hurt because it just, you got to know him so well in this book and he was so alive and just such a force and could have done so much good. And he was like ready to start that. Like he kind of always knew he would end up in a life of public service and he, his life just got caught, got cut short in such a tragic way. I'm currently reading Once Upon a Time, which is a new biography on Carolyn, his wife. I'm only a little bit into it at the time of recording, but I am really loving it. I've already learned so much about her. I only ever knew her as she married JFK Jr. I knew she used to work for Calvin Klein, but um, it's like a really great insight into her life. And it's, I think it's like really important too, because we always talk about like JFK Jr.'s death, but two other people died that day. And I'm excited to finally be learning Carolyn's story. And something that the author says, and that was in the beginning of the book about Carolyn is that like both of them, but like kind of specifically JFK Jr. died before he ever could have like written his memoirs or anything. And she was like, I would like to think that they would have liked their side of everything out there because they were also hounded by the tabloids. It's very similar to Princess Diana. Actually, in the JFK book, they talk about when him and Princess Diana met um, and they like had a secret lunch, I think, at the Carlisle in New York. But so good. So, so good. Um, Just just fascinating. And like I said, it was so good on audio. So five stars. I loved it. Probably like definitely one of my favorites of the summer. It's going to be a favorite of the year. That is JFK Jr. by Rosemary Terenzio and Liz McNeil. The next book that I read is also by two people. It is Elizabeth of East Hampton by Audrey Beleza and Emily Harding. So this is kind of a two-in-one because I posted recently asking what you guys wanted to hear me talk about for a listener's choice, and somebody said Pride and Prejudice, which I really liked because I obviously have a Pride and Prejudice backstory, but I was already planning on talking about Elizabeth of East Hampton, which is a Pride and Prejudice retelling, so you're going to get both uh, within this. So first, my Pride and Prejudice journey. So I never knew anything about Pride and Prejudice until like 2021 because I don't read classics. I don't like them. And I've been getting that mean comment from random trolls on the internet when I talk about my favorite books um, a lot lately. But like it is just – it's not for me. I think it's because it reminds me of homework. And I was actually thinking about this last night when I couldn't fall asleep. And I think it also has to do with like how you're introduced to them. So I don't like Shakespeare. And I think a huge part of that is because when I was first introduced to it, it was Romeo and Juliet. I was in ninth grade and my teacher – hated Shakespeare and she acted like it was such a chore and I went into it with that mindset and it was kind of the same thing with the classics for me. So I never knew anything. I never watched the movies. I knew of Mr. Darcy, but I was like, do we like him? Like I didn't I didn't know. I, I didn't know anything. Um and it wasn't until COVID hit in 2020 that I was like honestly getting a little embarrassed that I never read Jane Austen. And I just knew nothing about these characters. And it was when I was first becoming really involved in the book world. And I was like, I feel like I should try this. So I started with Emma by Jane Austen and um, I liked it. It was just hard for me to get through. Like, I don't, I just, I don't like reading the classics. I don't, I'm not able to slip into them the way that I am with like modern books. Like they're really just not for me, but I did Emma and I did it by reading like two chapters a day. So like there was a, a little bit of a phase of time on Care and What where I would always be like, oh, and I have like a classic book going in the background. And then I did Pride and Prejudice and then I did Sense and Sensibility and then I was done. Um, and I did I, I did really enjoy Pride and Prejudice, but what I enjoyed more was that I watched the 2005 movie and it is now one of my favorite movies. It's become a comfort movie. I also love the new Emma movie and I obviously love Clueless. I did watch The Sense and Sensibility with Emma Thompson and Kate Winslet and it was fine. I think Sense and Sensibility is probably my least favorite. Pride and Prejudice is probably my favorite, although I do really also love Emma. Um, the classics just aren't for me, but I'm... I'm glad that I 
read them and that I now know Mr. Darcy and we know the thing about him. Um, but I am mostly just glad that I finally was like, let me explore this because I love the movie. And I now really, really love reading Pride and Prejudice retellings. I love, I love getting a modern version of the story. However, that may be, I love seeing how um, people take on the story and Elizabeth of East Hampton does it in a really interesting way. So I saved this for a day uh, on the beach because when I go to the beach, I go to the Hamptons and I felt like I had to read this book in the Hamptons and it was just like perfect setting to read this. So you you know the plot of Ride and Prejudice, so you know the plot of this book. And I think that's why I like the retellings because it's just like, it feels kind of like a safe, like cozy read because you know that it's familiar, but there are new um, aspects of it. So in this book, it really plays into like, obviously Pride and Prejudice is very classist. And in this one, it plays into the Long Island locals versus they, what they call in this book city. It's like city idiots, the people who come to summer on Long Island. So um, I obviously know a lot about that being a both Long Island local and city person who only comes to Long Island for the summer. But I will say like, I've been going to the beach in September because it's like local summer now. And it's just so nice when it's just like the Long Islanders there. But anyway, um, our Lizzie Bennett in this book run, she works at her family's bakery and they're kind of one of the last like small family owned businesses on Main Street in East Hampton because the Hamptons used to just be like small local town before all the money started moving there. And she's Lizzie Bennett. So like we know her vibe, right? She's a surfer. She like really loves her sisters and her parents are kind of crazy. Her mom has this like crazy, like bedazzled leggings line. And she's basically like starting a pyramid scheme. I thought that was so funny. But in this version, our Mr. Darcy is a city person out east for the summer. So he is there with is it Bingley? Why did I just forget the guy's name? I'm Googling that because that's embarrassing. Yeah. Okay. So he's there with his friend, Mr. Bingley. And Bingley and his two sisters rent this like giant, ugly beach house that all the locals like have this funny name for, for the summer. So obviously like we know the plot of what happens. Jane falls in love with Bingley, et cetera. Darcy and Lizzie don't get off on the right foot. Um, but I loved in this one how – they played around with the class system of Long Island. And like, I don't know. It was just like, I don't know how, how much more I can say because we, you know what happens if you know Pride and Prejudice. But this is probably one of my favorite uh, retellings that I've read. It just, it also felt very familiar to me. And I think that they did a really great job portraying Long Island and the Hamptons and the types of people and characters that come in during the summer. I gave it four stars. I read it so quickly. I really loved it. That is Elizabeth of East Hampton. The final book is another romance and it is Dating You, Hating You by Christina Lauren. So this is one of their earlier books. I They read it the cover though, and it looks like very similar to, I think, I don't know. It looks very similar to another one of their covers, but I recently was like, why am I not picking up their backlist books when I see them for cheap at places like Strand, which like you get it used, so it's cheap. Um, And I picked this one up. So this is a Hollywood romance, but it's really interesting because this book came out a while ago, like kind of before we've gotten this influx of Hollywood romance books. And this is one of my favorites. And I know I talked recently, I was probably on the August wrap up about the book, The Reunion. And I was like, this one, that one also came out kind of before the giant trend started, but it came out after Dating You, Hating You. And I was like, I wonder if I would have liked this one more um, if I had read it when it came out and I didn't have so many books to compare it to because I feel like it now is getting a bit oversaturated with having all these Hollywood romance books. So I think it says something that I still really loved, Dating You, Hating You. I gave it four stars. It still felt very unique, even though there's like 5,000 Hollywood romance books out right now. So in this one, the main characters are agents, which I found to be so interesting. I've never read any book about agents. I've learned a lot about what agents do, and it added this really fun dynamic. So the main couple are Carter and Evie, and they are set up by their friends at a Halloween party, and they really hit it off. But then when 
Evie realizes that he's also an agent. She's kind of like, uh, and it turns out that they work for like rival agencies. So they go on a few dates and they really start to like each other. But then one day they find out that their agencies are merging and they're now competing for the same job. So within the competition, it starts off as they're like, let's kind of like not get into it. Like we really like each other, but they are working for like a super sexist boss and like all the misogyny of Hollywood really comes out and becomes part of the conversation. And they end up kind of like really fighting for the job and they have like really fun banter. Like I really liked watching the them and like the hating you part of it. Um, the agency angle was so unique and it was like the job part of it and everything happening with the merger was just as interesting to the romance for me. It was just like so, so good. Like I really love this. There's not so much more I can say, but um, I really loved it. I gave it four stars. That is Dating You, Hating You by Christina Lauren. So instead of mood reads, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do similar recs. So I have two book recommendations that I um, think are read-alikes for each of the books that I talked about today. So the first, actually, I just remembered another one for the first one. So for JFK Jr., I'd recommend Once Upon a Time, which is the biography on Carolyn Bissett Kennedy, and then Meant to Be by Emily Giffen, which is basically like a fanfic of JFK Jr. and Carolyn Bissett. But then also What Remains by Car- Carol Rodwell, who was a former Real Housewives of New York, one of my favorite housewives ever. She was married to um, Anthony Rodswell, who was JFK Jr.'s first cousin. His mom was Lee Rodswell, Jackie's sister, and they were best friends. And Carol was best friends with JFK Jr. and with Carolyn. Um, She is – Carol is in the JFK Jr. book. I can't believe I forgot to mention that earlier. It is a beautiful story about Carol's life with Anthony, who passed away from cancer. Like – right after JFK Jr. and Carolyn died. So it's just like, it's it's so sad, but it is so, so good and so beautifully written and um, highly recommend. Then for Elizabeth of East Hampton, I would recommend um, Meet the Benedettos, which is, these are both Pride and Precious retellings, obviously. This one is like a Hollywood reality star angle. And then my favorite one is Eligible by Curtis Sittenfeld. And then for Dating You, Hating You, I would recommend How to Fake It in Hollywood and How to Write a Love Story. Those are probably my two favorite Hollywood romance books. That is our show. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, the September book club pick is Realm Breaker by Victoria Aviar. That episode will be out on October 3rd. Submit your thoughts by October 1st. Please make sure you're following, subscribe, or get to on whatever podcast platform you are listening on. Follow me on Instagram at KRRUT. Follow the show at Professional Book Girl. If you are influenced to buy a book that I spoke about, please do so through my bookshop.org link linked in the show notes and on my bio on Instagram. And I think that is it. I will see you next week.